in a world permeated with barbecue websites under the control of tyrannical administrators. There was one man, a one-man army. He broke all the rules. He allowed his members to speak out, give their opinions, and make the website what it is today. Get ready for Greg Rempe and the Barbecue Central Show. Cleveland, Ohio. It's the Barbecue Central Show. It's the Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio. I'm Greg Rempe. What's up, everybody? A very good Tuesday evening to you, wherever you may be. Happy to have you aboard. Great show lined up for you. You know the drill. Don't need to go through the uh, the whole opening process. Uh, if you want to jump in tonight, 216 216- Two two zero zero nine six six is the number to get a hold of me. That's two one six two two zero zero nine six six. You can also email me if you uh, feel more comfortable with that, and that is BBQ Central Radio at Gmail dot com. That's BBQ Central Radio at Gmail dot com. First thing right off the top, if you're a listener of the Barbecue Central Show and you like it and you would like to share it with people, you're sitting at your computer right now, obviously, because that's the only way you can listen to it for now. So go ahead and pull up your address book and go ahead and blast out some emails to some people that you think would enjoy the show as well right now. Go ahead and send them an email with this link, www.latalkradio.com. Tell them that you're down, you're a centralite, you like the Barbecue Central show, pass it along. That's how we can grow the listenership, make it even more famous than it already is. Taking over the internet world, because I believe this is the only show that I know of out there, and I'm going to talk about the jobbers that are on the Food Network Talking about barbecue, talking about the, the craft of the American cuisine barbecue, just kind of jobbing it out there. This is the show that deals with real people, uh, that has a host that knows what he's talking about, and we go from there. You can always keep up with the important goings-on in the world of barbecue and grilling by going to our website, which is thebarbecuecentral.com. And, of course, if you have missed a Barbecue Central show here on L.A. Talk Radio, go ahead and circle back to the archives page by clicking on the Barbecue Central badge on the latalkradio.com homepage. You get a whole list of archive shows. You can download the ones you missed. And don't forget to Barbecue Central Show is also on iTunes as well. Search for the Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio, and there you go. So here's what's happening tonight. Big show, big names. Topic of the, uh, the panel-type discussion will be taking place next segment is going to be a moist versus a dry cooking environment. And joining me... Next segment will be Mike Davis, pitmaster of Lotta Bull Barbecue Competition Cooking Team, who's basically been tearing it up here over the last uh, number of weeks. I think he's strung together like four grand championships or something like that, so uh, he's doing uh, extremely well. Of course, team of the year in 2006, runner-up in 2007, and he continues on. And then the legend, the legend Mike Mills from 17th Street Barbecue. Uh, grill and restaurant, also Memphis Championship Barbecue in uh, Vegas. So they're going to be joining me to talk about wet versus dry, moist environment. Uh, that might push into a segment three. And, then of course, at the end of the show, Know Your Cue, sponsored by Swamp Sauce uh, tonight for your chance to win two bottles of uh, Swamp Sauce. So we'll look forward to that. Remember, you got to be listening live, and you have to be able to uh, answer the trivia question that I put out for you guys. So that's, uh, that's what's going to be happening on the show tonight. I'm going to step away, try and raise up Mike Mills and Mike Davis. When we come back, we'll have them on, and we'll talk about moist versus dry cooking environments. Scotty? You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. 
you can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at biggreenegg.com. That's biggreenegg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Are you a dedicated fan of L.A. Talk Radio or any Internet radio station? Not happy with the fact that you have to be confined to your computer in order to listen to this great, original, and irreverent programming? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Listen live all this week to Sam in the Morning, as you will have a chance to win a Phoenix Wi-Fi radio. What is that, you say? Simply this. The Phoenix Wi-Fi radio from Com1 allows you to listen to internet radio just as if it were regular terrestrial radio. This portable powerhouse picks up your wireless internet connection so you can stream LA Talk Radio or any other internet radio station from the comfort of your den, kitchen, living room, and bedroom. Keep listening to LA Talk Radio for full details to win your chance at a Phoenix Wi-Fi radio. Just another reason why LA Talk Radio continues to lead the internet radio world. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. BBQCentralRadio at gmail.com. If you want to email in, don't forget to visit the website, thebarbecuecentral.com, to hang out. Meet and greet with everything that's going on with the world of barbecue and grilling, as promised. Joining me now to talk about in a uh, in a panel uh, forum type discussion, uh, two guys that certainly know their way around the barbecue pit. We have Mike Davis, who is the pit master of the Lot of Bull Barbecue Competition Cooking Team, and the legend Mike Bills, Mike Mills of the 17th Street Bar and Grill in uh, Murfreesboro, Illinois, and the Memphis Championship Barbecue Restaurant in Las Vegas, Nevada. Gentlemen, welcome in tonight. How you doing? Nice to be here. doing well. All right, so uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, a topic that was brought up on my barbecue form about dry cooking environments versus humid cooking environments. Now, typically, it's, I guess, more well-known or more well-used in the MIM-type sanctioning uh, bodies where people like the moist, humid environments, and then more on the KCBS side, uh, there's maybe more of an affinity for the dry side. So we have Mike, uh, Mike Davis from Lotta Bull, who is more KCBS, Mike Mills, obviously uh, world famous as far as MIM is concerned. Uh, so, Mike Mills, we'll start with you. Which cooking environment uh, do you prefer? I'm sure you've used both. Which one do you prefer? Well, I would have to say that I like the uh, more humid uh, atmosphere than I do the dry, although I, you know, uh, do a lot of the dry cooking also. But... Uh, you know, it's kind of like what you get used to and, and uh, what works for you. Uh, so I'm more of a human man, and the uh, you know, with a, uh, a water shield, although I don't use that all the time, I have used it and still do use it uh, now and then. 
I think that it, um, you know, it just adds moisture in your pit. Uh, doesn't take away from the uh, all the moisture of the meat. Um, I'm sure that uh, Mike Davis, uh, you know, does more of the dry, and he'll be able to tell you more about that and why. But uh, it's just easier to keep it uh, uh, your meat a little more moist. I think uh, by having a water pan. Of course, you got to use one right. You know, if the water is not boiling and it's not steaming. It's not putting out any humidity. Mike Davis, you're the dry guy. Uh, why do you like that? Well, um, you know, I, I understand exactly why Mike does uh, the, the humid side, you know, and I've seen the guys use the the, uh, the water pans and the water baths, you know, and I certainly don't have anything against that. We, we've we just become accustomed ever since we started in this business cooking with wood. Um, at one point in time, we even tried to put water in the pit, but... I couldn't see that it helped anything. Using a dry, a dry wood heat that we use, we seem to get a better bark on our briskets. Uh, we seem to get a, um, I think the seasoning set a little better to me. Uh, and, and, and again, like Mike said, you know, it's what you get used to that, that makes all the difference. And as I've always said, you know, if you can cook on whatever pitch you got, if you can control the temperature, you can cook on it. And, uh, it's kind of the same way the humidity in the in the pit. You know, if you can control that, you know, if you can do it with or without, then you're doing a great job. So uh, we had just grown up using just wood, and I guess that's really our biggest thing. So uh, that was kind of that. actually. No, I'll agree with you, Mike, uh, about the uh, the bark. Uh, it is it is easier to get the bark with the uh, uh, you know not using the shield. Uh, right. You know, of the water pan and, and that type, whether you're using a full water pan or if you're just using uh, uh, moisture cans here or there, uh, you know, to keep that humidity in there. But you are correct, it, and it, you know, it does. It is easier on the bar to get that bark. You know, yeah. uh, I have to achieve that a little later on in in my process, right. uh, because it will stay softer. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you you'll get a nicer bark a lot quicker than what I can uh, uh, right. get one. Uh, and you know, uh, also uh, I've I've learned that the age of the wood makes a lot of difference. You know, when we're dry cooking, like that, that's what I call dry cooking. But um, you know, if if my wood is not completely dried out, that I still got some life in that wood. Uh, people call it rosin. You know, to creosote the inside of the pit. But if I get a thin layer of creosote, I've still got moisture in that wood, so it's not totally dry. Uh, wood that wood that was been out for you know two years, sitting in a rack somewhere. Yeah, you might as well burn charcoal in it because that's all you're going to get. It's just completely dry that way. Yeah, you're you're right on there in, in what you're saying. Uh, yeah, the greener you know if it does still have some green in it uh, or some moisture that hasn't completely dehydrated out, uh, you do get some moisture out of that wood. Uh, yeah. That's why one of the things that. Uh, in splitting the wood down to smaller sticks, a lot of times you're, uh, it, it will uh, dry out on you a lot quicker. Uh, sure. You know, stacked up. Uh, sure. Rather than being in a little more of a log type yeah. situation. Right. I have a. I might add, I, I hear and read about you all the time, Mike, about uh, uh, you're evidently from all the things that I read and I see and I hear a, uh, a great barbecue. And I just Thank want to you. commend you on uh, all the contests and, and all the th- good things that you do. Thank you very much. I'd like to say the same about you as well. And one of these days, I'm going to get to Murfreesboro to meet you. So, Well, you know, this year we're having a KCBS contest uh, in conjunction with a uh, Memphis style. Having both of them at the same time. Mike, Mike Davis, okay. you, could cook, uh, you could cook MIM, right? Uh, I never have before. But you would do it? Sure. Sure. I ain't, I ain't. <laughs> give give that well, Mike Mills guy a run for his like money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't back up from it. I just never have done it. <laughs> I had a, uh, a, a, qu- a listener uh, submit a question, uh, and he's kind of the guy that, that brought this topic up. And his question was this Does the moist environment weaken the amount of smoke flavor in the meat? And this was kind of his logic in that the rising hot, humid air would carry the smoke straight out of the cooker, leaving mostly cooler, smoky, smoky air around the meat. Would a wet environment require more smoke than the dry one does in order to achieve that same smoky flavor overall? And uh, we'll start with Mike Davis. 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it would. Um, I, I think that kind of comes back to placement of of the exhaust uh, in the cooker itself, or what kind of cooker it's been used on. I'm I'm not sure that you would carry right on out the exhaust. I think more is going to hang around into that anything. Mike Mills. Uh, you're exactly right, Mike. It does hang around in there, and you know, and it does depend upon where the exhaust is. And also, you just learn how much wood it takes to give you the flavor profile that you're wanting. Uh, you know, knowing knowing the wood that you're cooking with, and uh, uh, by using that pitch, you know how much it it takes in there. In either instance, whether you're cooking dry or whether you're cooking with a uh, with with moisture, uh, and I don't use moisture all the time. I do understand the theory of it. And one of the biggest problems I see with most people that are using the moisture, they uh, sometimes it never gets hot enough until the end of the cook for that moisture to have ever done them any good. It's more or less as a that pan ends up being a shield. You know, it's uh, it's kind of like beer can chicken. Mm-hmm. If you don't get that beer hot enough in that can to create a steam. It's all in your mind about being able to get the flavor of profile out of it. Will right. you agree with me, Mike? Exactly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if you, you if know. you don't get it hot enough to, like Mike said in the beginning, if you don't get it hot enough to boil that water to make the steam in there, you might as well just leave it out. Yeah. Because it's, it's not, not doing, doing any good at all. Whatsoever. So it would be uh, best to bring water up to a boil, whether you're using an offset or some type of vertical smoker to get the water. But, I mean, would you put in boiling water into uh, into a pan to get it rolling right off the bat then? I don't. Uh, you certain? I don't, I, don't, I don't do it in that way. But, uh, I mean, it's going to make it quicker as far as that part of it goes because I just start my fire and make sure that I have some fire underneath and or in and around if I just happen to have a can of water in there. You know, uh, it's the same principle as putting uh, uh, water in your fireplace uh, in your home. If you have a pan of water or and it, it, if it doesn't get hot, you don't get any moisture out of it. But, you know, a fireplace will dry out in your home, you know, and you're trying to get heat out of it. And a moist heat seems hotter than a dry heat. Right. You know, I mean, you know, uh, take, I don't know where you all live, but where I live here in southern Illinois, you know, I go to Las Vegas. It was 114 degrees the other day when I was there. And, uh, you know, as soon as I took a, a breath, I mean, I could feel all that dry, dry heat in my mouth. Right. Where I live here, the temperature, the 90-degree temperature, and I've usually got about a 90-degree humidity. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm staying wet and moist all the time. <laughs> you know, out there they got 6%. Right. All right, guys, we're going to uh, step away for a quick break. Uh, if you guys can both hang on through this, uh, we have a couple of the questions, and then we'll uh, cut you loose. Sounds good. All right, stand by. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show here on L.A. Talk Radio. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at biggreenegg.com. That's biggreenegg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, 
vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS Competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. TheBarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. This is Jennifer Paulinus from Shalote, North Carolina, and this is Barbecue Central. The phone lines are open on the Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. Call 216-220-0966 to get on the air. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Barbecue Central Show on LA Talk Radio. Don't forget, coming up at the end of the show, know your cue for your chance to win a two pack of Swamp Sauce barbecue sauce. And you can find out more about them at swampsauce.com. We'll go ahead and pick back up with our conversation. We have Mike Davis and Mike Mills, uh, both uh, very well known, very well respected uh, barbecuers. And we're talking about moist versus, uh, hum- or moist versus dry cooking environments. Um, I guess a, a question that I would want to ask is, is because we have, you know, Mike, who is uh, obviously or both are Mike, Mike Davis, who is more KCBS focused, Mike Mills, who has obviously had a, a, a terrible amount of success in uh, Memphis and May. Does the humid cooking environment lend itself more to MIM type competitions? And likewise, do the dry environments lend itself more to KCBS style uh, brand of cooking? And we'll start with uh, Mike Mills first. You know, I don't know that it uh, lends one way or the other. Uh, I think that Mike will agree with me. We're both out to uh, achieve basically the same thing in the styles of cooking. Um, and if you can achieve it in the dry method, uh, I think that that's the way to go. If you can achieve it in the uh, uh, more humid method, uh, then that's the way to go. It's what works for you. Because we're still trying to uh, uh, both come up with the same type of product, you know, that has the flavor, that has the smoke, you know, uh, has the uh, the smoke ring, all of the things that the uh, the judges are looking for. But it can be achieved in both methods. It's just a matter of what happens to work for you. What do you think, Mike Davis? Oh, I think I think Mike's exactly right. You know, I see I see some differences in the way I cook on the Kansas City side. It just from from me to another competitor cooking against me, and you know sometimes I, I cook pretty hot and fast, you know, so I, I tend to lean more to the dry. But if a guy's gonna gonna cook on the moist side, and he's having to start way early to what I am, uh, and there again we're all going to a common goal, trying to get the best product we can to the table for the judges. Um, and, and I think Mike's right, you know, it's just. It, you know, I sound like a broke record sometimes, but it's all about your cooker, and it's all about the way you operate your cooker. And if you can control it, then then you're good with it. If it takes you eight hours to do a brisket or if it takes you 16 hours to do a brisket, uh, obviously you can't run a, a brisket on dry environment for 16 hours. I wouldn't think you could. I mean, maybe you can, but I don't think I want to make you do, but... <laughs> what Mike. you're saying, Mike, see, I, I agree with the same thing. You're cooking, as a general rule, you're cooking uh, hotter than I am. I right. have the low and slow method. Uh, mm-hmm. So the moisture helps me in that respect, sure. uh, as far as that part of it goes. But at the same time, you know, I don't necessarily uh, want that through the whole process. Right. So I'm, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get dry. uh uh, sooner or later in it because I want that bark that you're talking about on there. You know, Absolutely. I wanted to uh, uh, have that skin, you know, to develop it. And, sure. uh, you know, where you're cooking something, uh, I'm just guessing, I'm going to tell you eight hours, you know, let's say on a brisket. I'm cooking one 16, 18 hours right. uh, just because of the, of the difference in uh, uh, temperature and the cooking right. method. Right. Both trying to achieve the uh, favorable vote from the judge. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, some would say that... So, so there uh, isn't any... 
you know, in, in all of the barbecuing and everything else, my I've taken the attitude there isn't any necessarily right or wrong as long as you're able to produce the product that you are happy with, uh, you know, and whether you're cooking for your family or your friends or uh, whether you're cooking in a competition. Now, you, in a competition, you need to see what is winning, uh, and you'll be able to taste that and see what the uh, what the judges are after uh, in either competition. So, you know, but to, and again, how you achieve that uh, is up to you. You just need to make those judges happy. <laughs> so they'll give you the scores. Now, it's been brought up to me that uh, whether it's, whether you're, you know, typically a humid environment kind of guy or whether you're a drier environment kind of guy, uh, typically, the dry guys will at some point foil, um, and probably that holds true uh, with the uh, with the humid guys too. But regardless, if you're a dry guy and you foil, then typically, or, or people are saying that at that point you're introducing moisture anyway. So even if you think you're all dry, technically you're not. Do uh, you agree with that, Mike Davis, at all? Well, not necessarily because I'm 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 still dry, but the only thing I'm doing is I'm stopping the moisture for leaving that meat. I'm just I'm 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 just I'm holding the moisture captive at that point. So I'm not really adding anything to it. I'm just not letting it leave the meat anymore. What do you think about that, Mike Mills? I'm gonna say Mike, I'm gonna say this as a as a friendly joke. <laughs> I used to foil I know, here I here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that. I do that as a joke to somebody, you know, I meet somebody for the first time and I walk up to their pit and they'll say, Now They'll be wrapping some ribs, or they'll be wrapping this, or doing that. And don't misunderstand me; I've wrapped a million of them. <laughs> but at the same time, and you know, they say, "Now, what plus? When do you wrap?" I said, "Well, I used to wrap before I learned how to cook them straight out." <laughs> and they'll look, they'll turn around and look at me and, and think I'm the smartest aleck that ever, ever. I do it as a joke. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I catch you pretty regular from Paul Kurt too. So. <laughs> oh yeah, you will. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but you know, and in my opinion, on on the the wrapping, yes, at that point in time, yes, you're you're uh, holding and you're tenderizing, so you're you're keeping from losing part of your moisture whenever you know uh, on on the wrap type situation. Uh, well, you know, and like I say, you don't understand me. I have uh, sure. I've, I've wrapped a lot before. Right. And and I tell people, you know, even in the classes that we hold, um, people say, well, why do you wrap? And I say, well, I'm speeding up the process. I don't want to. I don't want I could do exactly like you're talking about, Mike, and, you know, and do the brisket for 16 hours. I don't want to. Right. I, I want to I wanna speed the process up. And that's what I tell them. That's, that's really all you're doing is speeding the process up. You guys, and, uh... and that's, as I said a while ago, in figuring out what works for you, Exactly. That there is no right or wrong. Right. It's a matter if that works for you, that's the way to do it. You guys, uh, you yeah. guys up you for uh, you guys up for mixing in a phone call real quick? Sure. Let's uh, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Uh, how do I want to do this? All right. It's not uh, okay. Barbecue Central Radio. You're on the air with uh, Mike Davis and Mike Mills. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, I just want to comment on the dry and the uh, the wet smoke. Um, I do the wet, and when what they're pertaining to about the having the water boiling, I mean, I really don't. I know it helps, but the cooker I have is 400 gallons, and it holds 10 gallons of water. And the water never boils, but you can look in there in the cooker and see the water steaming. And I also, you still there? Yeah, and I also do the do the wrap too like on the pork butt you know the first four hours i do a cold smoke get that out of the way i cold smoke at the beginning about after four hours i'll wrap it and then i'll turn it upside down where the fat sides up and it cook the rest of the way so the, the you know drifts down through there you know what i mean it comes out pretty good that way all right thanks yeah. for the call thank you that's there, there again there again that's exactly like mike said what works for him so all right, guys. Uh, yeah, and, and, go ahead. And that, Mike, you know, uh, as he just said, and maybe we said, uh, and I know that I, I mentioned it, that you had to have that water boiling. 
he did mention he had steam coming off of it. That's what you have to have. I don't necessarily right. mean that it's got to be into a hard boil, but it has yeah. to get hot enough for there to become a vapor off steam coming off of that. If it is, uh, uh, if it's you know, basically cold, it's uh, uh, and it takes hours and hours for a lot of times for it to you know, come up, especially on a uh, uh, you know low and slow heat. That it mm-hmm. would take hours for that to ever get up hot enough to get that vapor. Well, so but that's it, why but, you know, but that's also why heat that up a little bit. Yeah, but also if, if he's at the steam point, he's not very far, not very many degrees away from boiling. So right, right, absolutely. All right, guys, uh, this absolutely. is the uh, the portion of the show where uh, you are uh, free and available to plug any websites or upcoming appearances. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start with Mike Davis. Um, actually, we're going to uh, be in Shannon, Illinois this weekend uh, to cook in the butt to butt 10 year anniversary and then uh, cook the Seal of Dreams contest. Uh, website we use is a lot of bull, a lot of bull com. Appreciate any uh, traffic who can get there. Mike Mills? Well, I'm not going to be any space place special this weekend other than, uh, you know, cooking barbecue at uh, here in Murfreesboro, Illinois. Uh, this weekend, as I do most weekends, uh, Shannon, Illinois. I may uh, I have to look up that up and see how far uh, north of that uh, that is from me. A long way. <laughs> where, 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 what's it up near? <laughs> nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere, huh? <laughs> you know, you know where Lasalle is. Yeah. Okay, I'm, it's Lasalle. about. Yeah, LaSalle. It's about uh, an hour and a half northwest of LaSalle. It's it's pre- it's pretty good distance from me then. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably a probably a five hour drive or more. Uh, <laughs> well if you wanna meet if you wanna meet Mike Davis that bad, five hours is just a drop in the bucket. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll meet Mike at the Jack or <laughs> at uh I'll see him down at one of the, one of those. It won't be that long before that's happening. Mike yeah, Mil- exactly. Mike Mills is uh, from 17th Street Barbecue and also the uh, Memphis Barbecue uh, Championship Barbecue in uh, Nevada. Mike Davis is the Lot of Bull Barbecue uh, Competition Cooking Team Pitmaster, guys. I certainly appreciate you uh, coming on tonight, and uh, I definitely want to have you both uh, individually uh, for your own segments here coming up, too, because there's a lot to talk about about the KCBS and, of course, uh, Memphis in May with Mike Mills and, and the books and, and all the awards as well. So, guys, I appreciate it, and have a great night. Thank you. Good on with you, Mike. Been great. Hey, thanks, Mike. You Take care. Uh-huh. Appreciate Bye. it. All right. So that was uh, Mike Mills and Mike Davis. And I'm looking for, I thought I had a phone call coming in. I guess not. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, catch up on a little bit over. When we come back, know your cue for your chance to win a two pack of Swamp Sauce barbecue sauce donated by swampsauce.com. Scotty. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. 
You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at biggreenegg.com. That's biggreenegg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. This is Jimmy Burns from Melbourne, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central show on LA Talk Radio. Welcome back. It's the Barbecue Central show here on latalkradio.com. Don't forget to the website thebarbecuecentral.com. You can also email bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. You can also call in if you're uh, so inclined to give your thoughts about the interview I just had with Mike Davis and Mike Mills. Thanks to both of those gentlemen for coming on tonight and talking about the moist versus dry cooking environment. The number 216-220-0966. Barbecue Central Radio, name and where you're calling from. Uh, Chris in Seatown. Chris in Seatown. What's up? Yeah, hi, Greg. Um, hi. I, I just wanted to say that I, I find this whole discussion of moist versus dry cooking just very exciting. Uh, in fact, let me pull my pants up here real quick, but I wanted to ask you a question uh, about another style of uh, barbecue that we have going on here in Cleveland. It's kind of underground right now. It's called Porky Pig Style Barbecue. Have you heard of this? No. What's Porky Pig Style Barbecue? Okay, that's barbecuing, wearing only a t-shirt, no pants. Thank you for that. I don't think I'm going to be taking part in Porky Pig Barbecue. Well, maybe I will. (laughs) Thank you for calling in, Chris. I appreciate that, and I'm sorry, I am seeing your, uh, your email asking me to ask Mike and Mike the same thing. I'm glad I'm only getting to it now. Helen uh, emails, Kevin in Encinitas. Big shout out. He's down. He's a centralite, or uh, she's going to convert him soon. Good looking out, Helen. Appreciate that. Again, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com if you want to uh, weigh in via email about the uh, interview that took place over the last couple segments, or you can call in 216 220 0966. And now we uh, get to the portion of the show where you know your cue. You win a two-pack of Swamp Sauce barbecue sauce. I've had this sauce myself, and uh, it is different, but in a very good way. So if you're interested in taking part in this contest, you need to dial 216-220-0966, and then you will need to answer this question. Mike Mills has a restaurant in Las Vegas, Nevada. What is the name of that restaurant? Call in. Give me the correct answer. We'll submit it to judges. If they give you the ding ding, you go ahead and send me your uh, shipping information via email. And uh, Tim at Swamp Sauce will uh, send a two-pack your way post haste. And that's uh, that's what we'll do. Again, 216-220-0966. The name of Mike Mills Restaurant not in Murfreesboro, Illinois, but in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Two different names, so make sure you have the right one as you're uh, quickly Googling, as I know you central lights are, because I'm sure you weren't paying attention during the interview. And a very good interview, by the way, very candid, very uh, open discussion. Wasn't a lot of uh, leading needed on my part. Uh, Quite frankly, uh, who am I to have actually taken part in that conversation anyway? I was just more of a facilitator, and that's uh, that's how it should be when you're talking to uh, two guys like that. So, Completely off topic. Last, uh, I believe it was last Wednesday, because I did make a note of this when I was listening to uh, my favorite sports show from 12 to 3, National uh, Sports Guy. 
who brought up the fact that the Arizona Diamondbacks catcher, whose name I wrote down and have now misplaced, he took a foul ball right to the man package. And it had to have been the worst, by far, the worst baseball injury sustained by a human being ever in the face of history. He took a foul ball in the man package, and he uh, fractured his fractured his testicle. Yeah, that's right. Fractured his testicle. So I can't possibly th- I can't possibly think of anything worse. That, I mean, how do you even fracture that? I mean, to fracture. I think it was like a year ago or two years ago that uh, mountain climber got trapped underneath a rock and he took out his uh, took out a Swiss Army knife and he cut his own arm off. <laughs> that guy called in and said fracturing a testicle hurts. Oh, Nevertheless, what? we go to uh, Barbecue Central Radio. Name and where you're calling from. Helen, one poke, CA. Helen, what's up? Not a whole lot. So bright and light out here. How's Lom- it going over there? Lompoc. I know. Lompoc. Uh, 912. I wonder if somebody's calling in to uh, horn in. You're calling in for the contest? Well, I guess I'm late. I don't know if it's... Uh, no, nope, it's still on. Nobody's, nobody's called in yet. Okay. Stand, stand by. We're going to join, uh, join a call here real quick, okay? We go to area code 912, naming where you're calling from. This is Ramon Cato. From Willacoochee, Georgia. How you doing? What was the first name again? Raymond. Raymond. How are you? All right. How are you? Raymond, were you calling in to win uh, win the sauce tonight? Yeah. All right. Uh, can you hold on one second? All right. Helen, were you calling in to win the sauce tonight? I was going to try. You were? Oh, yeah. All right. So here's what we'll do, because I'm a nice guy. I will... Uh, Go ahead and give you both an opportunity. So, Raymond, stand by, all right? All right. Raymond is now muted. Helen, stand by. And now it's time for the game show sweeping the nation. Know your cue with your host, <laughs> me, Greg Rempe. And now, here's me, Greg Rempe. All right, Helen, the uh, question on the table, Mike Mills Restaurant, located in Las Vegas, Nevada. The name for your chance to win a uh, two-pack of Swamp Sauce. Go ahead. Helen. 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 Is this Raymond? Anyone. I can't believe this is about to happen. Sorry, Helen. Raymond, you still there? Raymond, you still there? Yeah. (laughs) That lady called in, and she she got disconnected. All right, so we're going to play, all right? All right. Here we go. And now it's time for the game show sweeping the nation. Know your cue with your host, me, Greg Rempe. And now, here's me, Greg Rempe. <laughs> All right, Raymond, how are you doing tonight? All right. How did you find the show? Uh, from the National Barbecue News Forum. Oh, all right. We're getting out a little bit. Very good to see. All right, Raymond, uh, Mike Mills has a restaurant located in Las Vegas, Nevada, not named the 17th Street Bar and Grill. So go ahead and give me the name of his Restaurant located in Las Vegas, Nevada, for your chance to win a two-pack of Swamp Sauce Barbecue Sauce. Go ahead. It's the Memphis Championship Barbecue. Memphis Championship Barbecue. Judges? All right. Raymond diligently taking notes tonight. Either that or you Googled. Either way, you're a winner. So uh, what you want to do is go ahead and email me at bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Your shipping address, I'll get that over to Tim at Swamp Sauce. And uh, post-haste, you will be delivered two bottles of Swamp Sauce barbecue sauce. All right, that's BBQ. Central. Central. At gmail.com. All right. All righty. All right. Raymond, I appreciate you listening. 
Thanks. Take care. Yeah. Raymond, a winner. Helen, what happened? <laughs> there you were, and uh, there you went. Technical skills. Barbecue Central Radio, name and where you're calling from. Helen again, you hung up on me. Negative. No way, I did not hang up. Well, Wait here patiently. I heard you in the background, and uh, you were nowhere to be found. No, it went clicked off. <sighs> totally dead. I, I muted. Uh, dead. I, I muted our our uh, our guy down in uh, Raymond from National Barbecue News Forum. How about that? Raymond. Raymond. He's the winner. Raymond. All right, Helen. Oh uh, my God. Here's what you need. I think so. Do you want to? Uh, <laughs> do you want to play? Do you have the answer? Championship barbecue. What is it? Memphis Championship Barbecue. Memphis Championship Barbecue. All right. <laughs> Helen is a winner. Now uh, I'm gonna have to send you out maybe uh, some some like type of rub since I gave the sauce away. Just a little like you know a little pack. Right, but I'll uh, I'll let you know what I have. You can tell me what you want, and we'll get it right out to you. Right on. Thanks, Greg. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. There you go. Man, audio skills decreasing ever so quickly. That's going to do it for tonight. I want to thank Mike Davis from Lotta Bull Barbecue. You can visit him at his website, LottaBullBBQ.com. Check him out at Butt to Butt this coming weekend. Also, Mike Mills, the legend, 17th Street Barbecue.com or Memphis BBQ.com. Check out both of his uh, restaurant websites. Again, very special thanks to those guys for coming on tonight talking about humid and dry cooking environments. Thanks to the emailers. Thanks to the callers. Thanks to Sam Hassan, my sound engineer in Los Angeles, for running the sound tonight. Don't forget, Broad Topics is up after me. We'll see you back here next Tuesday at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for the Barbecue Central Show. This is your program host, Greg Rempe. Good night now. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue and grilling product on the market with its unmatched capabilities and flexibility that surpass all other conventional cookers combined. It's a smoker, a grill, and an oven. You can literally cook any food on it year-round, from appetizers to entrees to desserts. The Big Green Egg lights fast, and it's ready to cook on within 10 minutes, and no need for that yucky lighter fluid. The ceramic walls retain heat with an accurate temperature control, so there are no hot spots. And since the top is down while you're cooking, there are no grease flare-ups. Its handsome, unique, and decorative design produces the juiciest and most succulent food you'll ever taste. And don't forget about the world-class customer service and the lifetime warranty that goes along with every unit. You can find out more about the Big Green Egg by visiting their website at biggreenegg.com. That's biggreenegg.com. The Big Green Egg, the most versatile and unique barbecue and grilling product on the market. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Miner gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Are you a dedicated fan of L.A. Talk Radio or any Internet radio station? Not happy with the fact that you have to be confined to your computer in order to listen to this great, original, and irreverent program? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Listen live all this week to Sam in the Morning, as you will have a chance to win a Phoenix Wi-Fi radio. What is that, you say? Simply this. 
The Phoenix Wi-Fi radio from COM1 allows you to listen to Internet radio just as if it were regular terrestrial radio. This portable powerhouse picks up your wireless Internet connection so you can stream L.A. Talk Radio or any other Internet radio station from the comfort of your den, kitchen, living room, and bedroom. Keep listening to L.A. Talk Radio for full details to win your chance at a Phoenix Wi-Fi radio. Just another reason why L.A. Talk Radio continues to lead the Internet radio world.